welcome back. So we're going to start part two of our Jungle Ruins painting, and I'm so glad that you could uh, join me now. So just to recap uh, on part one, and in case you've not seen part one, I, I hope you can uh, get into my YouTube channel and, and check that out. But we, we completed the background here, the distant uh, clouds, distant mountains, we worked on the cliff with the cliff carving and started bringing in the water. Um, I did bring the middle ground in. I, of course, I didn't show that. I think we're going to have a problem getting everything that we want to work in. Uh, but just because of the magnitude and complexity um, of this painting, it's very time consuming, a lot of detail. So I did go ahead and paint in our middle ground here and that was important to get established as well. That helps to really tuck things back even further now. So what we're going to work on now, um, I, what I really want to dedicate time on is actually the ruin itself. This is going to be, of course, the main focal point um, of the painting, which will also kind of be a focal point alongside this um, large statue. But um, I went ahead and I blocked this all in. Um, it did creep out into the sky, so I had to kind of paint that in as well. But it's really just blocked in. I went ahead and I added some, just some lines here, just some, some detail with my charcoal pencil to kind of give me a guide. Um, and what we're going to start with is um, I want to bring in some trees. I need a couple trees kind of peeking out right here behind this, this um, ruin. So we'll start with the trees and get that worked in and then we can start working into the, um, the ruin itself. Now I've given this a lot of thought. And I've never painted uh, ruins before, so this is going to be something new for me. But we can still use the same techniques, the same sort of tricks that we use with, with really anything uh, can be applied to this as well. Um, but as I've thought about this, um, what I'll show you is I think we're going to start, we're going to use this, this base coat, which is just a granite gray house paint. Um, I think is going to be a really good base coat for... Um, working on our ruins. I really like the color and I think it's going to work really well for what we're going to try to do. Um, but we're going to start also, once we've established the trees in the back, we'll move into the ruin and I'm going to start to just be, bring in all the shadows and lines. There's going to be a lot of separation because of the uh, brickwork, the stonework, the masonry, um, and it's going to be obviously uh, quite antiquated. Um, so there'll just be a lot of detail and I think that's what we'll get started. So for now we'll just go ahead and jump into the background, bring in the trees, and then we can start worrying about the rest. Let's get started. All right, so I'll be switching here in a little bit to my oil palette, but I wanted to first um, just bring in a little bit more of some activity here in the background. So we'll, we'll still be using the acrylic palette for a little bit longer here. And I've mixed together my ultramarine blue and burnt umber, created this kind of gray tone and I've added a little bit of white to it to opaque it. Uh, but making sure that it's just a little bit darker than that cliff in the background. We really kind of want to push that cliff into the background a little bit more and create kind of another another value here. So um, I've moved over here to this small round brush. Um, it's kind of an older brush that I've splayed open the bristles so that uh, I can get some good texture here. And I'm just kind of dotting on a little bit of, uh, of a stippling effect here and giving the indication that we've got maybe some some shrubbery or some some little trees way off in the distance here and so using that same gray mixture I've just added a little bit more white and blue and um, a little bit more sap green to that but keeping it fairly soft and and fairly light to give that impression that it's it's really far back in the distance. Now using that same round brush I can go back to my gray mixture and just start to create um, 
a little bit more brush here. Um, I'm kind of watching the pattern that I'm I'm using. I'm looking at my negative space. I don't want to kill everything happening in the background because I want to continue to maintain that, that depth. And then I can come back now with my rigor brush and add a little bit more detail, a little bit more individual um, leafing formations here with this tree. But really this, this isn't going to be a lot of detail. It's still going to be somewhat in the shadow and it's going to be kind of tucked into the back. And so um, there's really no reason to spend an enormous amount of time here. But I really wanted to get this kind of worked in first before we started bringing in our, our ancient ruin, um, since this will sort of be more into the background behind all of that. Now I'm adding just a little bit of color Again, going back into my blue-green mixture with sap green and ultramarine blue and, and just kind of bringing on a little bit uh, more leafing happening here. And then I can come back with a small little round brush and, and just bring a little bit more individual uh, leaves back into that. And so this is really all we need to do to kind of accomplish having more or less this mid-ground um, effect here happening with these with this tree. Now a little bit later on, I don't show it, but I'll add some some palm trees uh, as well behind our ruin. Um, I just felt that I, I really wanted to still give that impression that we've we've got the jungle setting here, and it just seemed like it made sense. But it was just a decision I made. A little bit later and it's nothing I'll show but it's really going to be incorporated in the same in the same sense that uh, I'm demonstrating here right now and now I can kind of work a little bit more on some of these these vines uh, there are a lot of long ropey hanging vines uh, in in these jungles so now you see that I'm going over um, what I initially had planned with this with this ruin, I I kind of thought I'd I'd use this lighter gray uh, base tone and I'd bring in the uh, the stonework and then start darkening it. But I as I got into this, I figured that's just going to be way more work than I need to get involved with. That would require a lot of of just adding a lot more darks. And so I figured what would be easier here is to go ahead and just block it all in. Um, what I've done is I've moved over to my oil palette now, so I'm blocking all this in oils and uh, again just created this nice dark gray mixture, which is um, in this case I used ultramarine blue, doxazine purple, um, a little bit of, of ivory black, and some burnt umber, and that's what uh, I used to create that nice dark gray. And then while it's still wet, I can come back with uh, adding some highlights. And I've mixed together an Indian yellow, um, as well as a little bit of yellow and uh, orange into that gray mixture. And because it's wet, it'll kind of pick up some of that wet oil paint in the background and it'll kind of start to create a little bit of some, some movement and some effects here. And I wanted to get that all kind of worked in while it was still wet. And now that it's kind of begun to dry a little bit, I, I gave it a couple hours because I'm using um, my I'm using my Griffin Alkid oil paints, so they dry fairly quick. So I gave it a couple hours, and then I've decided to come back now and I can start stippling on some texture. So I'm using my Tree and Texture brush. I believe that's a three fourths. Uh, tree and texture brush uh, which I purchased from Rosemary and Company which is a really cool uh, British um, company creates some really great um, uh, brushes and, and paints and so forth so um, just taking my time here um, I've what I've done is I've used I'm using liquid um, liquid original and ivory black oil paint 
and I've mixed it more or less into a 50-50 sort of blend. And I'm gently coming through and stippling on some texture. I wanted to get kind of the porous old stonework. This is going to help to kind of sell the illusion that this is a really ancient building with some really weathered features. Uh, you, you don't want to press too hard. This is a really gentle, um, sort of almost like a whisper, touching the, the paintbrush to the canvas. And now I'm coming back. I've, I've mixed a kind of a blue-gray, uh, ultramarine blue, um, and a little bit of black, and some white, um, and a little bit of that purple. And I've created this grayish color that's just slightly lighter than the base coat and I'm coming back and beginning to stipple on once again there'll be a lot of stipple work and this is really time consuming I'm not going to lie about that this really takes quite a lot of time and uh, you just need to be extremely patient and you want to make sure you're properly loading your brush you don't want to have it too too saturated with medium um, and you don't want it too dry so it has to be somewhere in the middle and you just kind of have to play with that but uh, if you have it too wet it's just going to make big blobs and you don't want to press too hard because again that can just make big blobs it, the idea is really keep it stippled keep it very small little pinpricks of paint and you're going to just cover the entire surface with that. And you'll see that um, predominantly I use this technique for the majority of, of this ruin. And this just gives an enormous amount of detail. It looks like you, you're working extremely hard, which you are working pretty hard. It does take some time, but it's not nearly as complicated and it really gives a nice feature. I also wanted to bring back that we're going to have some some moss, um, some algae that's kind of growing on the side of the stone. So I've mixed together a, a green. Uh, matter of fact, I believe what I'm using here is I'm using a terra verte green, um, a little white, a little bit of ultramarine blue. Kind of kind of keep it into the shadow colors, kind of the cooler colors, um, and that's what I'm stippling on now. But you see that I'm jumping around. I don't want to kill all the effect that I have. I just want to jump around and think about where I want to add this this moss and, um, and just get that stippled on. So um, again, it's, it's a gentle touch. And, and it's good, even though you're using your Alkyd paints and you're using your liquid, which is fast drying, just give it some time. Give it a couple hours, give it a day, go back over it. That way you're not really smudging anything. You're not turning things into mud. And uh, then I've added a little bit more blue here now um, because I wanted to kind of bring on that, that algae appearance. Uh, a little bit of growth happening or here around the stones and just kind of changing it up. It kind of keeps it keeps it pretty interesting. And it's just really a matter of kind of going back and stepping back and seeing, you know, does it does something look like it needs worked a little bit more. Um, do I need to add something somewhere? Now I've I've mixed together cad orange and cad yellow and white, made this gold color. Now we're going to start to to work on the sun side of this building where where the sun glow is really kind of striking the uh, edifice. And um, I, continuing once again, we're just we're just stippling this on. Um, so there's. It's really mostly an exercise of using this trimming texture brush and creating that texture. And um, it's really effective. Uh, it, it helps to really kind of sell that illusion of, of age, uh, that this is really old, it's really, it's really weathered. Um, it's been through centuries, possibly, 
um, here in the jungle and, uh, you know, have a lot of this um, just overgrown sort of uh, nature's really just kind of taken over here. Now, um, I'm just kind of opening up a little bit more shadow here. Uh, this will be a, a part of the building that's a little bit kind of opened up uh, into the uh, into the roof. Uh, some of the stone is missing, and uh, it's kind of opened a gap into the roof. So I, so I was kind of kind of bringing in right there a little bit, and then just adding a little bit more of that blue stippling, so I can kind of keep it fairly cool on on the shadow side of, of the building. This, this is the part of the building that's facing away from the sunlight, but there'll still be some reflected lighting that's kind of happening here. And this is really important that we don't keep it too dark uh, as well on this side. We, we just want to give it some life. Um, it's going to be so close to the viewer. It has to give that illusion that it's, it's much closer. There's a, a lot of detail here. And so we're going to spend a lot more time working on the uh, this foreground uh, focal point. Now I've let it dry overnight so now it's it's dry to the touch and I've created a glaze. I'm just using um, I'm just using ivory black and I've got some liquid and I'm just glazing over a little bit more dark and now I can come back with my rigor brush and with my black and I'm just thinning this down to an inky consistency and now I can begin actually laying in the separation of each stone um, and, and kind of the, the, the different pattern into the masonry here. So we're going to go through the entire section. Of course I'm using my reference photo um, which I, I think I, I do show that I have it in my hand at some point uh, in in this demo, um, but um, I'm loosely using my reference photo. I have to take a lot of artistic liberty. Um, for one, the photo is just so-so. It's not extremely clear, and I had to change the angle of the building slightly and kind of open it, open it up a little bit more. So I'm just taking some liberties here, and I'm, and I'm kind of using it as a rough guide, but but it's, it's uh, effective enough that I can get a fairly decent uh, idea about, about where I'm going with it and where kind of how the, the uh, stonework um, is, is represented from that photo into the painting now. And I've got to really think about my vanishing point, really, um, the angle as I start to move uh, from eye level on up, it's going to start angling downward. It's going to start to angle kind of in a descending angle uh, toward the right. So that'll help to keep that illusion of perspective. And you don't want to lose the perspective. It's very easy to do that. And so uh, the photo kind of is helping with the perspective and I'm just kind of trying to follow that basic roadmap here. So I can come back now, as you can see, I'm beginning to angle downward and um, that'll give that illusion that it's beginning to kind of move a little bit off toward the background somewhat and uh, give us that particular perspective. So I'll spend some time now just going through the entire building. Again, this is an exercise in patience. Uh, this will take a lot of time um, to, to accomplish this. And because we're using oil paint and the rigor brush, you wanna, again, make sure that the paint is is um, it has enough of the of the mineral spirit or the the paint thinner whatever you're using it's got enough of it mixing with the paint that um, it's very inky and that it it will flow well and you want to load the you want to load the brush well um, I remember when I first started using um, 
liner brushes, rigger brushes, whatever you want to call them, when I began using them, I had a tough time mastering it, um, getting it to, to work proper, to transfer to the canvas properly. It was really frustrating, and it really was a matter of the fact that I just wasn't getting the right consistency and fluidity with the paint, and I wasn't loading it well enough. Either I put too much and it would blob, or I wouldn't put enough, and it wouldn't transfer into a nice thin line. <clears throat> so, you know, it will take some time, and I've heard other folks have challenges with that as well. So um, it's just a matter of, of just persistence, trying it, keeping keeping at it, and um, eventually you'll start to, to form that specific feel for it and that specific technique and I guess that's the interesting thing about about art in general uh, things that you're just not going to learn in a classroom is is things you have to just pick up on your own and that's really how you hold the brush the type of pressure you apply with the brush how you load the brush those all those things are just as important as figuring out composition as figuring out your your palette and your your colors and, and your mixing, um, <clears throat> perspective, um, value systems, those are all important things to think about. And um, and so you need to learn how to use your tools, use the brush, how to hold the brush. And, um, and that's just going to be simply going after it and trying it. And you can't read any books really that will teach it to you. It's really just a feel. So now I'm coming back, I've gone back into my um, mixing of, of that gold color with orange and yellow and white. And I'm using that small uh, round bristle brush. And now I'm coming back and I'm really beginning to stipple on even more highlight now. <clears throat> and, um, and being really thoughtful about where I'm placing those brush strokes. Because now I don't want to kill the uh, all that line work that we've done. And then I can continue with that down this shadowed side of the building. And again, you can kind of see how my, my perspective has changed. Now it's starting to come back to eye level again. So I've got to change the, um, just change the angle it's going to be a little flatter of course my camera is not exactly uh, straight on with this it's kind of off to the side so it still kind of appears like there's a bit of a of an angle there but it's really more level it's more horizontal now and uh, those are the types of things you really have to think about when you're doing architecture and and where you want that that sort of um, illusion to to take the eye and then um, you know continuing bringing that in into that mossy region now it's still going to have some some separation in the tiles and in the stonework there and I'll go back a few times because I'm going to go back and I'll continue to stipple and then I'll bring back in my lines and I might actually cover the lines when I do a little more stippling and it's really just trial and error because as I mentioned I've not <clears throat> I've not done ancient ruins before this is literally the first time I've ever attempted this I I do like to do buildings of, of various sorts but uh, the, these ancient structures is just a different a different animal. It's a lot more detail, which I think is kind of fun or really it's it's a lot more fun um, working on old things because you get the chance to give it a lot of character when it's really weathered and old. Now I wanted to bring some lines in. It looks like from my reference photo that that this building had a little bit of um, design that was maybe um, some some carving um, some some masonry that had a little bit of of carving of designs into the side of the of the stones and that's kind of what I'm trying to capture here I've just mixed together um, ultramarine blue and white that's really all I've got and I've kind of graded out with a little bit of of black um, and then I can just come back with my 
flat brush here as you see me do and I can sort of just introduce these little lines here. And then in a little bit I'll bring in some more stone carvings which are carved into the side of the stone um, which was also on the reference photo which I thought was really cool and I think it added a lot of, of interest to the painting so I'll be demonstrating that here fairly soon as well. But I can come back now and, and provide some shadow. Now this is where I'm beginning to bring in the carvings of these of these little, I don't know, these little women, these little people who, who knows, they could be deities, um, but um, really just kind of using that same gray-blue mixture, really, and, and, and uh, using that dark under painting that I kind of brought in there um, can really work for your your advantage and if you just kind of skip around um, and not and not kill all that you can really bring in those those uh, carvings fairly simply so I thought it was kind of kind of interesting and I think added a lot of uh, fun uh, to to our building Okay, so now we're going to start bringing a little bit more three-dimensionality here. You can sort of see uh, the stones peaking uh, on the sides of the, uh, the windows here, adding a little bit of depth uh, into that wall. And so I wanted to get that worked in here as well. Um, obviously with perspective, we're going to be able to see a portion of the side of the, uh, of the windowsill uh, in these in these areas and so just wanted to bring that in as well and it's just kind of a matter of, of just kind of using your reference photo also using artistic license making some judgment calls um, and what kind of looks good that's kind of how I, I was kind of approaching this and I take a lot of time to step back and really look at what I'm doing Average viewing distance is usually seven, six, seven feet. So step back six or seven feet and see if something just needs to be massaged a little bit. You know, does it need to be changed a little bit and um, or added to? And then, um, so I spent a lot of time stepping back. I also spent a lot of time getting away from the painting. I think over the course of hours and hours of working on this in, in days and weeks, um, you you get so kind of um, accustomed to seeing it, and you almost grow somewhat, I don't know, um, stale toward it. And you got to get away from it and clear your mind so you can have a, a fresh view of it coming back. Now I'm going to start to work on the stairs. Um, this was not actually part of the reference photo. It's just something I just wanted to bring in and, and kind of made up on the fly. Um, I wanted this large tree to be growing out of and around the building. Um, so this really gives that indication that it, it's been there for centuries. And this tree is kind of more or less grown right out of the center of this building. So this tree was actually in my reference photo, which I thought was really cool. Um, but I wanted it to be cascading down a stairwell. And so I'm bringing in that gray for the stairs and then I'm kind of bringing in this uh, kind of olive green uh, that I've mixed together. I'm actually using um, Indian yellow and um, sap green, a little bit of, of white, and I'm going to just block this entire tree in with all of its long roots uh, that are kind of snaking out all over the, or around the building. Now I did take some liberties in the intricate root network um, from the photo. The photo had a, a pretty basic uh, tree uh, with some neat looking roots that were sort of webbing out, um, but I wanted to take that a, a step further, so I'll take the basic um, image from my reference photo, but I'm going to really augment it and um, add some additional vines and roots that are really just kind of running all over the painting or all over the uh, building so I just thought it might add a little bit of extra interest and since this is you know this is uh, my world and my vision this is kind of what I thought would be kind of cool and 
and appealing to the eye. Now while that paint is still wet, um, I wanted to just bring in a little bit of a lighter version of that by adding some more yellow and some more white to my to my green mixture and um, start to form a little bit of dimension uh, now into these roots and um, kind of start to bring it into a little bit more three-dimensional and uh, I wanted to make it soft as well so by doing this while it's still wet uh, which is the the wonderful thing about oil paints um, over acrylic it's very hard to do this with acrylic because they dry so quick um, but uh, since I'm now working with my oil palette then I can do this and another reason I wanted to I could probably still do this entire painting in acrylic but moving to my oil palette now um, enables me to really get a richness um, that I just can't quite achieve very easily with with acrylics. I think the paints have stronger pigment. I think that they are more vibrant. And so I wanted to make sure to get that in. Now I've let a, about a day go by and um, I've let it dry overnight. And you know, by the next day with these with these Alkid paints, they're they're dry to the touch, so I can come back now and I can begin to lay in the next layer of detail to this to this paint. So now I'm kind of establishing the stairs, I'm starting to establish some of the stonework. There's gonna be um, more or less flagstones um, that we're gonna be able to see. Um, peeking out between the roots and then on into the actual steps of the uh, stairs here. So really just incorporating the exact same approach I did with the building where I lay, I lay in the main block of paint and now I come back with my tree and texture brush and my black and uh, mix it with liquid and really bring that in. And the nice thing about liquid um, because you could do this without medium as well, uh, which I do sometimes if I'm trying to achieve a specific uh, look. But with the liquid, um, not only does it dry quickly, um, but it creates more of a glaze. So it, it's really kind of darkening without removing the features behind it. It's just darkening those features. And I like that because it creates depth. And I'm doing the same thing with the tree now. I'm coming back with my dark black and my liquid mixture 50-50. And I'm now stippling on top of this tree that I've let dry. Now, if you try to do this while the tree is still wet, you, you may have a little success, but it will just end up kind of getting muddy. So you need to let a little bit of dry time occur so that you can come back with the... Um, with the um, liquid and and really get that nice textured stippling effect and um, this will again once more it'll give a lot of detail it'll show it'll really create some age um, to this to this tree just as it does to the building itself and just adds a lot of really cool features I think that are kind of unique and, um, and because, again, because I'm using the oils, because I'm using this particular approach, um, it does tend to really draw the, uh, the subject forward in the painting. And you'll, you'll probably notice if you've seen other paintings I've done where I do acrylics first and then lay in oil. A lot of times with acrylics, when I'm working a background, I'll work the background to completion in acrylic because what I like about the acrylic is that it will begin to dull as it dries so the water is evaporated and as the water evaporates the color and the pigment begin to darken a couple shades and it almost takes on sort of a chalky effect is probably the best way I can describe that. And I think it looks really great for backgrounds. I think because you don't need a lot of um, a lot of detail necessarily for a distant background, that it really works well. 
And then when I bring oils in, because they're so vibrant and so vivid, because there's so much pigment and character with the oils, they tend to work very, very well for objects that are in the foreground, objects that are a lot closer. And that's really my rationale on why, why I do that. So you can almost see now, as I brought in the building, as I brought in the tree, it's really helping to really push back even more distant now all those cliffs and all those mountains and clouds that we've got way in the background. And so that is um, really my rationale behind why I do that. So I'm continuing to work on the tree and I'm still stippling on more color. I'm using that, that, um, I'm using that olive color and, um, and just continuing to highlight uh, more area where I think we're going to get some reflected highlights uh, here in the shadowy area with with our tree. And I want to add a lot more character and interest uh, to this, but keeping that stippling effect. Now I've mixed together a gold color, which again, just like the building, same colors, uh, cad orange, cad, cad yellow, and white. And I can kind of capture where the sun glow is really striking the left side of the uh, of the tree trunk, and um, in a little bit I'll add some glazes once this dries, and I'll be able to bring in some further shadowing, which I'll demonstrate here in a moment. But getting all this kind of worked in here while it's it's uh, kind of day two and it's still a little bit wet, um, I can kind of capture those features uh, with this particular technique. And you're probably hearing my uh, my grandson um, is running around upstairs and he's banging. So if you're hearing banging noises, then I apologize. But uh, he's three years old and uh, he's an enormous amount of fun and he's a ball of energy. But um, sometimes when I think I can escape for a few minutes and do a video recording, uh, a voice recording. Um, to, to my uh, chagrin, I'm not able to always accomplish that. Uh, when he starts to get active and starts jumping around upstairs, so hopefully that's not too disruptive. So um, I'm coming back here with my, with my liner brush and I just, I'm kind of just really scumbling on little pieces of texture, you know, little, uh, little gnarly holes and cracks in the wood little lines, just just in, some interesting little little features here, um, just to make the tree even look that much more interesting. Now this is where I'm coming back with some glazes. I've let this dry and um, I started glazing and what I realized is I was glazing the wrong direction. I think I started glazing that angle downward on the tree and, and later on I thought, you know, that building is actually not probably going to be striking the shadow of the tree on the tree that way. It's its own shadow. Um, and so I'll go back later and kind of change the angle. But right now I'm just using these glazes and I'm coming back into the darker sections of the tree and I'm just kind of darkening them up with a liquid and with uh, ivory black. I've actually mixed together ivory black and ultramarine blue to kind of give it a little bit of coolness and I can really start to um, bring some more shadowing and dimensions. I wanted a shadow to be hitting onto the building as well that the tree's hugging, uh, just right there off to the right. So these glazes are really helpful to be able to bring in those additional shadows, and that's really all I'm kind of doing here uh, with the liquid. Now I'll go back here in a little bit um, and I'll change the direction of that shadow. Uh, I just had to let that epiphany kind of strike me after I, I kind of stood back and looked at that. So I wanted to bring some ivy in now and I wanted that to be kind of hugging the walls and kind of going in all directions. So I've mixed together green and blue and um, a, little bit of, a little bit of white um, but keeping it predominantly uh, more cool, kind of cool greens, uh, since this is our shadow side. And I'm just kind of bringing in each individual leaf 
um, for this ivy and I wanted it to kind of be running up the wall and kind of snaking out in different directions. Um, and I also was thinking a lot about my, um, my contrast. I wanted to get some good contrast, so I kind of go peeking past the, sh the window into the dark area of the window. And, and then as I go to the sun sh sunlit side of this, then I'm changing into more, adding more yellows and whites into that green mixture. And even going as far as um, uh, using some pure yellow and some pure white a certain very um, just very sparingly using white um, but I wanted to get like um, that effect that maybe certain leaves in the in the ivy are are so sunlit that they're nearly pure yellow and pure white so I just did that sparingly if you do too much of that it, you'll kill the painting and you, know, you won't be happy with the effect so that's really all, but I wanted to get the contrast here uh, with the ivy going from cool to uh, sun glow ivy and uh, thought that would give a nice touch. Now this is where I'm improving my angle on my shadow on the tree. Um, I figured uh, it's going to actually be angling upward and not downward and so I just let it dry and then I was able to reintroduce that. And then I can come back and kind of stipple on a little bit more texture and add a little bit more interest. Um, I wanted to improve my um, the moss growing and kind of get a little bit more um, kind of a lighter yellow green um, into the moss as well and give it a little bit more character and uh, separation as well. So that's kind of what, what I'm doing. Coming, coming to this sort of a refining point now. I'm coming to the end of the uh, addition of, of bringing in the ruin and uh, so now I'm kind of reaching that point of refinement where I, I just step back and I look at everything as a whole and I just make some judgment calls on if there's a little more shadowing needing to be done, a little more highlighting needing to be done, do I have enough texture, do I need to stipple a little bit more, do I need to have some more separation, so these are all the things I'm really thinking about and um, and just hitting that final refinement. So um, yeah, this is kind of this is what I have uh, to go off of. Again, I was I wanted to do a voiceover. I thought that would be a lot easier. And um, and so this is the final product. And I appreciate you viewing. so that will conclude our second part of this video jungle ruins um, I hope that was helpful for you kind of showing you how I put together throwing in kind of an old uh, ancient ruin um, you know there's a lot of detail a lot of time a lot of patience is required um, but that's kind of how I do it you know and and a lot of it was trial and error because I don't typically paint these types of things so I had to took a lot of time and think about how I wanted to, to do that. So um, thank you so much for tuning in. Next time we meet, uh, we'll be working more on this foreground. I want to start to work on the courtyard here. We're going to have a lot of broken stone work. We're going to have um, old ancient pieces of, of other buildings that are just kind of tumbled down. We'll bring in a lot of debris. Uh, we'll bring in more of the jungle features. Um, I'm still contemplating putting in some sort of a, a cougar uh, or something into the painting somewhere. So we're going to figure all that out. But uh, thanks again. And if you've not done so already, please subscribe. And uh, hopefully uh, you can join me again as we work on the third part of our Jungle Ruins painting. Thank you. So long.